Hello everyone, this is Elias Martin of CollectingJapanesePrints.com. Welcome to Woodblock Wednesday, where every Wednesday we get together and discuss Japanese prints, paintings, history, and culture. I want to welcome all of you who are joining me as well on YouTube. These videos are recorded live on Facebook, but then are moved and archived onto YouTube um, and where you could find other uh, videos from previous Woodblock Wednesdays or my seminars. So if you go to my website, uh, collectingjapaneseprints.com and go to Woodblock Wednesday, you'll see all the Woodblock Wednesdays and you, you'll, if you click on events, you'll see the previous um, you know, uh, seminars that I've hosted. So welcome all of you. I have some really wonderful paintings to share with you. There are two scrolls um, in commemoration of the Year of the Tiger. We've just moved into the new lunar uh, new year. Um, and this year, the, the animal that is associated with the year is the tiger. And, uh, you know, I thought it would be fun to show two paintings done by very different artists, done in two different periods, and two radically different styles. Um, and so the first one will be by a famous Shinhanga artist. His name is Hiroshi Yoshida, and he's certainly very famous for his woodblock prints. Uh, and of course, most of you have are familiar with them. I mean, he's, he's, was, he was a very prolific, important 20th century uh, Shinhanga artist, but he was also a painter, an oil painter, and I featured um, Previous, in previous Woodblock Wednesdays, both his prints and his oil paintings. But today, I'm going to feature uh, a sumi on, on silk mounted as a kakemoto, kakemono. So without further ado, let's have a look at our first work. So um, I'm moving things around. And so th this is the wall that I usually have paintings and, and scrolls. And in today, I have this wonderful Hiroshi Yoshida, as I said. Um, a sumi pigment on silk mounted as a scroll. And for those of you who don't know, sumi is like a black mineral pigment. Um, it's natural. And it basically is what you see throughout um, Japanese painting um, in the Edo period, as well as, you know, in the modern or in the 20th century. Um, and so in this particular case, it's a fantastic profile of a tiger and um, what we see here is you know the face done with really wonderful um, splashes of dark uh, sumi pigment that's a kind of a wash that goes into areas of light gray um, and of course then um, the white of the background of the um, of the of the uh, pigment of the silk and so I just thought I I would introduce this work. It's not one that's well known. It was actually in the in the collection of the Hiroshi Ushida family up until maybe, I don't know, about 10 years ago or so. And um, it was then um, in, a, in the collection of a prominent collector uh, who has since um, consigned it to me. And so I will be offering this work in my next website update, which is in a, just in a couple of weeks later this month. And so this is sort of a sneak pre preview for the exhibition. And, and so, you know, I just want to just show this really wonderful, skillful um, composition. First of all, I love the composition. It's a close up. Uh, often what you see um, with tigers or lions or these big cats is you see a little bit more of their body and they tend to face the viewer uh, in a more sort of pronounced and focused way. Here we have um, a tiger sort of in, he's in profile, and he's sort of caught in, in a moment of contemplation, kind of looking out, and uh, we, we see him at rest. And, uh, you know, Yoshida has done a great job of creating a sense of fur, throughout the, the the body of the animal. And in particular, I just love the way that his paws were uh, rendered. I mean, you could really get a sense of the meaty flesh be beneath the paw, as well as sort of the the fur that seems to sort of trail over the paw. It's, it's really cool. And of course, here um, you see the 
the sue me that creates a really wonderful effect of the first sort of um, relaxed down across the the arm the paw of the uh, of the tiger so yeah I, I, I think it's a fantastic piece and I should also point out that um, this work was done um, by Yoshida in the 20th century but it's not dated and so I suspect there's only I suspect he did it in commemoration of of the year of the tiger and in his lifetime um, there were two year two years that this work could have been done. It could have been done in 1938, which was a, a year of the tiger, as well as 1950, which happens to be the year that Yoshida died. So Yoshida was born in 1876, and he passed away in, in 1950. And so it's interesting to note that this work could have been done either of those dates. I really don't know. Stylistically, Yoshida Sumi paintings are are pretty consistent throughout his life. And and so it could be a 1938 um, piece or it could be 1950. Uh, regardless, the, the work is in fantastic condition. And let me back up so you could see the entire composition with the, the, the mounts. You can see the mount is this beautiful brown uh, and olive color. And there's this wonderful amount of negative space above the tiger, which really adds um, actually quite a bit to the, the composition. It adds contrast to the, the tiger in terms of the darker areas at the very, very top of the head. And then as they graduate to a lighter gray, but it, it also it sets the stage to, for the drama of this really wonderful, majestic creature. I'm going to zoom in so that you could see how wonderfully rendered uh, Yoshida uh, has made this stunning tiger. Now down here, this signature is Yoshida's typical signature that you find on his Sumi pigment uh, paintings. Um, he also used it on his oil paintings sometimes on the back. I've seen this on the back of the canvas, but typically he would sign his oil paintings in the Western format. But you also see the signature on his trial prints um, in, in, in other places. So it is a, a very well-known uh, style of signature. And then here we have two um, sort of seals that he used throughout his life. Um, and so... I'm going to zoom in so you could see how beautiful this work is. Hiroshi Ushida is one of those artists that was so versatile. Um, you know, he created obviously a, a, a huge group of, of woodblock prints throughout his life. I mean, he was a prolific artist and, and produced some of the most iconic Shinhanga designs. Uh, but in addition, as we, we've discovered throughout our Woodblock Wednesday videos, he produced uh, oil paintings, oil on canvas in the Western uh, manner, as well as watercolors. And, and the Sumi pigment style paintings really echo his watercolor work. Zoom in, and the condition of this painting is fantastic. Uh, you know, there, oftentimes, as a collector, you want to make sure that paintings are free of any foxing or even creases throughout the, the painting. And this work is really finely done and in pristine condition. Now, what I want to mention, you know, it, you might hear some background noise or doing some work to the upstairs unit. So my apologies if uh, we hear a little bit of this or that. But I will be moving to the other room where it will be a little less noisy. So I just wanted to show uh, so this fantastic work here. I'm going to back up a little bit. You could see the entire work. One last time. Yeah, that's stunning, majestic creature. All right, so now I'm going to move on. We're going to move to my living room. So for those of you who have not seen, uh, this is 
sort of my living room where I hang out. Um, and I have another painting here. Hopefully this light doesn't affect it. Let's see, maybe that might be better. Um, this light uh, might interact, I don't know. Uh, we'll, we'll do the talk without the light and see what happens. Um, it might be a little bit dark, we'll see. But this painting is by another Japanese artist. It's unread, um, his signature, so I actually don't know who produced this painting. Um, but it is an Edo period artist, and you'll see how different in style this painting is. And, and, and it's so different, and it's almost comic. I mean, people have connected these to sort of, sort of manga, and this is not necessarily a manga as quality. It's more of a fantastic sort of imaginative quality of what a tiger would be because Edo period artists never seen a tiger before. Uh, they've read about these creatures. Uh, tigers, as many you know, aren't native to Japan. Um, they're from India. And some, I think, were in China, but they, they were never showed publicly in Japan. And so many artists rendered these tigers almost as if they were sort of overgrown, cute house cats. And um, they kind of look, you know, very cute and, and fantastic. And they also look kind of clumsy, almost as if their paws are a bit too big for their body. Um, but yeah, they're highly stylized and, and, and I just love them. I absolutely love these Japanese tigers. And um, here, I'm going to zoom in so you can see some of the detail. I just love how the eyes were were producing these oval shaped eyes um, with this stunning shading and these wonderful stylized eyebrows around the eye. And if you might, you could see the white strokes of, of little lashes coming out of, of, you know, just some, some lashes that were coming out above the, the sort of the eyebrow. And of course you have that here uh, as whiskers and the teeth they're all really well done and on in the ear here you could see these fine lines that were were um, produced to sort of create the fur here down here we have the paws and um, often what you see with these tigers is you always see the tail sort of in a really playful way. The, it, it's usually cut off and either you see the tail sort of above coming in, or in this case, it comes in um, from the right side of, of the viewer into the composition. And so the, the style of this, I mean, you can, it's done in a way that where you, the tiger is so big and, and imposing that he can't fit completely into the composition of the of the scroll and so it's just really a portion of the body and the narrowness of the scroll format sort of echoes sort of the long lanky uh, quality of the tiger and you could see the long legs uh, again echoing that uh, narrowness it, it's really fascinating um, and really playful and com really compelling. I, I, as I said, I just think these, these are uh, some of the more adorable images of, of cats. Now, just for contrast, I'm going to turn on the light that might affect our viewing for a moment. Uh, the light in my living room is a little weird. I have a stained glass window um, ab just above. And it's a very dark, gloomy uh, Chicago afternoon here. And so the lighting doesn't really help, the natural lighting. But I just thought we could start off without the light to give you a, a, a different uh, sense of what the painting looks like. The colors are, are a bit more saturated um, in, in real life than uh, what it looks like with this bright, bright light. Um, over there, I, I included this light uh, right near the the, the painting, partly because the, the painting does need a light. But I, I just like the shape of this yeah, this this lamp. It's actually a vintage piece from the from the late fifties, early sixties, and the oval quality of the lamp reminds me of the oval shape of the eyes, and so that's why I sort of put these two together.
So I'm going to zoom in so you could see the detail that was done to create the fur. It's really fun. Wonderful detail. So I should point out that tigers really weren't introduced to Japan until about the Meiji period where some traveling circuses arrived and they were, you know, for the very first time introduced um, to, the pop, to the public um, and artists started producing very realistic tigers during the Meiji period. Um, it wasn't just that they got a chance to see tigers uh, firsthand. It was also... The Meiji period was really focused on realism. Um, the realism from the West was very much in, in, in favor in Japan at the time. All of the art schools were uh, highlighting yoga or Western painting with a very uh, a strong sense of realism. And so the tigers produced during the Meiji period really echo the realism of that period. But before that, in the Edo period, you, you, you do get that playful sense of imagination and artistic license of what a tiger might look like. So I'm going to zoom in one last time and then we'll go back to the Yoshida scroll and see that one last time. But, you know, I just think it's such a, a fun sort of comparison to be able to showcase um, a traditional sort of Edo uh, style tiger versus something that, um, let's walk over, something that is very much realistic and at the same time impressionistic. You know, Yoshida did paint and in his, in his watercolors do have that impressionistic quality to them. And so, of course, this watercolor really shook, or well, this watercolor, this Sumi work really echoes that impressionistic watercolor-like um, quality. Well, I want to thank all of you for joining me on this installment of Woodblock Wednesday, where we explored two very different paintings uh, by Japanese artists exploring the subject of, of the tiger in, commemora in commemoration of uh, the Lunar New Year. So uh, if, if you're interested in learning more about Hiroshi Shida, as I mentioned, I have other videos dedicated to him, um, one on his, or a couple on his prints, and then um, one on an oil painting I had uh, some time ago. So I encourage you to look at my archive of videos on collectingjapaneseprints.com. And of course, keep an eye out, I have a wonderful exhibition of newly acquired works, which will feature this Hiroshi Yoshida tiger. It will be available for sale along with some other wonderful things. So um, I encourage all of you to keep an eye out for that as well. So thank you for joining me on this installment of Woodblock Wednesday. And I look forward to seeing you again very soon. Till then, bye-bye.